right, welcome to the Daily BA. My name is Ryan O. You are here because you are hopefully a behavior analyst or you're an RBT or you're someone that is interested in behavior analysis to some sort of extent and you're looking for some content that's a little outside of the box, a little different. So I like to make creative videos that are essentially highlighting cool things that I've learned about the field and such. On today's show, I'd like to go over instructional design. All right, so first is story time. Now, I ran across the Mager six pack through Joe Lang. And I mentioned this on one of the previous episodes talking about the forums and where to find cool resources and such. Joe Lang is a PhD who studied under Israel Gold Diamond. He was a brilliant behavior analyst and I'll be covering more of his resources over time. But Joe Lang studied under Gold Diamond and Joe Lang got really, really fascinated in instructional design and essentially through some running ins on the teaching behavior analysis listserv, he pointed me to the Mager six pack. And so specifically, what we have is six different books, it's a six pack, um, on creating uh, instructional material. So I do not remember the exact order of these, we'll just read them in order. Making instruction work, preparing instructional objectives, how to learn, how to turn learners on, dot, 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 without turning them off. Uh, measuring instructional results, goal analysis, and analyzing performance problems. And now Mager, note, was not a behavior analyst. However, he thought behavior analytically, he conceptualized things in very similar sorts of ways. And it was in primarily training situations. So one of the common things is have a training problem. It's probably not the learner's fault, but it's something to do with the instruction. And that is so core to the central notion in behavior analysis of the learner is always right. Now, this is written in plain English, you can pick it up. I really like it specifically because there's an intro book and then it gets into specifically understanding the different components and what goes into good instruction. And it turns into one of those kind of read and like choose your own adventure sort of book. If you know the skill already, you will read and it'll say, okay, if you understood it and you got it correct, go to this page, if not, go to this page. So some of these I flew through, others I had to read the whole thing. Now the six pack is not super cheap, um, I've always historically picked them up online for about 100, 150 bucks as a set. Now, that said, you can pick them up individually. If you're going to pick just one of them up, I would suggest picking up Making Instruction Work. It is essentially an overview of everything else that is in all the other books, and it gives you a little bit of taste of what's going on in there. Now, with that said, this led me down the line of two other books, Analyzing Instructional Content by Tiemann and Markle, and then also Markle's Design for Instructional Designers. Both of these you can pick up through Morningside Press. Of course, like everything else, I'm gonna make sure that the links are down below. And these, these are a blend of instructional books and workbooks. So you go through actually learning how to apply and applying the concepts themselves. Now, they range in everything from the learning process to actually how to conceptualize learning and actually do these concept analyses and break things down and actually apply certain basic principles and designing your instruction to be able to effectively reach the goals that you're trying to help your learner reach. Now, these both go hand in hand. I would read designs for instructional designers first personally, and then I would jump into analyzing instructional content afterwards, but that is my personal preference. I don't think there's a particular order that you need to go in. One of the biggest concepts that is proposed in this book, I will just show a quick flash because you can find this anywhere online, is this here itself. It is the diagram of the types of learning. And so what they did is they broke down the types of learning into nine distinct different areas. Some of them broken down a little bit even more. And why would this matter? That's the next question. So some times where these would be useful. Let's say that you're trying to teach somebody and they're not necessarily learning everything that they need to be learning. These tools, be it a lot to actually dive into and understand, will give you the exact skill set that you need to be able to analyze almost any performance problem. Now, on top of that, if you need to design an instructional sequence from the ground up, you're maybe say you're the entrepreneur, you're creating some new program, or you wanna create some new solution in an area where you're gonna to have to teach somebody something, these are your basics to understand and master. Now you say, what about an example of someone who's used it effectively? Awesome question. And to that, I would say Headsprout. It was a reading and reading comprehension program designed by a lot of behavior analysts and other people as well involved. And a good way to think about this is they separate, they separate behavioral technologies into two things. You have your tech of process and your tech of tools. Now what we have over here is what you typically learn as a behavior analyst. This is your contingency analysis, what we would call your instructional design. 
and your sort of consequential analyses, all of those sort of things that we get taught in our master's programs, our undergraduate programs. So this idea of your gadgets, your hardware, your software, those sort of things. And these two come together to create a behavioral technology. I will link a Lang and Twyman article I think it was 2014 where they talk about this distinction and how they and others created this program called Headsprout. And so, so Headsprout is a perfect example of the power of this sort of instructional design. Through some three years, a few million dollars, 500 or so iterations or whatever it was, this team created a program that could teach someone to read and understand and comprehend exactly what it was that they're reading at over a 90% success rate without ever hearing or seeing the student. Just think about that for a second. Never hearing or seeing the student. You're like, how would they do that? It's through mouse clicks. They worked on so many iterations and understanding and pulling apart the different tool, component, composite skills, figuring out the structure and the order of all these sort of things, what sort of functional benchmarks and rates needed to be hit through mouse clicks to where they could design a program that that was that effective. In my opinion, that is the essence of behavior analysis. These should be pinnacles of any graduate research program, but you just can't find them typically in our graduate coursework. So if you want to pick them up, you can pick them up. Places to go to learn about them, there aren't many. I would be glad to work with some folks on the side to kind of understand how to put these sort of things together. There's a much more elaborate list and an actual training sequence that Joe Lang has put together. Um, we can definitely connect people with him as well. And I think that's all that I've got for you. Instructional design. It is a little known and very impactful area in my opinion and where I'm putting a lot of my time and understanding and effort behind the scenes. I'd love to know your questions, comments, what you like or not like. Have you found this useful? If you found this useful, how so? What are the limitations you've ran into? All of that is fair game. And so if you're into this, please hit that like button. It does actually make a difference. Share it if you're into that sort of thing. Subscribe also. I'll catch you in the comment sections. And yeah, I guess that's it. This is your daily BA.